visuals and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another visual guys film review spoiler free film review i don't know if it'll be the following weekend that comes after this review or the next weekend when we do the spoiler heavy podcast review depends when chris can fit his sitting in because we can only spoil it when chris has watched it um, as at it i'm saying black adam it is finally out black adam dwight says well sorry the voice i know it's awful try and get through through this review i'm gonna try and make it as short as possible newcastle played the other day would beat everton one nil and my voice has just completely gone because i was singing at the mighty tune i actually sound a bit better if we did the review like this either way i'm fucked um because very annoying very annoying i'm, I'm a smoking 50 fucking a day but anyway black adam is out it's done it's dusted i got the first screening out of the way for me and i'm gonna go back later on i can't remember because decided to have a tonight or tomorrow morning, uh, and this, this will go up on the Friday, so I'm a Saturday morning or tonight, we're going to have a, another viewing of it, uh, where we can spoil it later on, but it's spoiler free, so visuals, how good was Black Adam? The first thing we need to do is point out the fact that, I, I know a few fans online and stuff were a bit sceptical about this, and I was hugely sceptical, I was like, okay, Black Adam, Dwayne Johnson, uh, whatever name is the title character, is he going to be a good guy? They're going to make Black Adam good in this weird DCEU uh, we've got going on right now. How are they going to do it? Dwayne Johnson's usually always a good guy. Um, and I was very scared that we're going to bring him on and just make him sort of an anti-hero, but make him ultimately good. But no, a lot of this film, they stuck to his core roots of uh, of being a legit badass. You, can, you kind of saw it with the more trailers we got. When he's talking like Hawkman, and he's like, Yo, heroes don't kill people, and he's like... Well, I do. And it's like, okay, I see you're actually doing it. You're doing the character justice. And I think Dwayne The Rock Johnson, because another thing I was scared about was like, hang on a sec, Black Adam's not bold. Um, everything else with The Rock fits him beautifully, but I was like, he's, he's not bold. This isn't going to work. But it all worked. He's, he was completely, completely suited to the role. Obviously, the whole physical side of it, it's the fucking Rock is an absolute unit. Um an action star, it's all comic books, it's all about action one anyway. He absolutely smashed it the way he delivered him, the way that he, he showed the ferocity and the intensity and the medicine side of uh, Black Adam. He absolutely nailed that. So all credit to Dwayne The Rock Johnson because I have been, as much as I, I adore the guy as a person, but I think it's easy to sometimes critique him saying, well, he's always the same character, he's the same in everything he does. This felt a little bit different for him and I, w I was happy to see that. And um, I think we'll quickly mention like Amp Smasher and Doctor Fate and whatnot. They were all really cool. Seeing this um, and Amanda Waller being back, seeing all these and Hawkman, all these other um, characters coming back into well, not coming, coming into it was absolutely great. I I absolutely enjoyed the way they showed Amp Smasher from you know different size variations and whatnot, and going through and how different people like Hawkman going up against Black Adam and how that dynamic and um, I want to say relationship this that um, head to head sort of thing. Um, went went uh, went about because the, the chemistry between I can't remember the other lads the, the other actors name but they were really 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 great together. Piers Brosnan is absolutely amazing. Um, so the other side side characters, uh, Hawkman, Doctor Fate, uh, um, all of them, so freaking cool. Also as well because it was it was a good action right. The action sequences, the fight sequences, uh, the great big CGI sort of shenanigans all look fantastic. Um, there was a couple of moments that the, the big thing where, like I said. I felt like maybe over second view and I feel a bit different where I know I give them stick this I might contradict myself here for being like okay they're gonna make Black Adam bad and they're like okay we're gonna still stick with them roots but every now and then they kept reminding saying remember remember I'm sticking to the roots this isn't a good guy I am a bad guy and it kept like like he kept wanting to reassure us like are you okay are you okay remember I'm bad remember from the comics you know I'm bad I'm still bad do you remember that but then he did have his redeeming heroic sort of moment so but and it's the way that they told this Black Adam story is all justified, you know, the, when it showed you his origin and how he got the powers and stuff with his boy and whatnot. So it was all justified, but it did keep feeling like they were going, remember, I'm bad. Come here, come here. You join the film. Remember, we're, we're trying to be as bad as we can whilst making us look like a hero. I kind of got that vibe. It was definitely, um, it was it was really funny in so many moments. Like I've just mentioned, the action sequences were so frigging cool. Um, it's, it's hard to do a big... Um, blockbuster comic book CGI fight without it being like, yeah, it's it's usually going to be like wicked. That's why I love the Transformers. People kick up for Transformers, and I'm like, I just want to see robots fuck each other up. Perfect, you give that to me. Um, and this had their moments as well. Um, the story, no, no, I was, I don't know how harsh it was going to be a story. Again, this might be a second viewing sort of opinion change. I think the story flowed very well from you know uh, learning who he is, coming back, getting his powers. How does he fit in this modern day world? Um, 
I know the Rock mentioned loads where Superman and whatnot uh, stick around because there are some cool shenanigans that play, take place. Um, how he was going to fit into this whole world in uh, modern times and after he's been asleep, well, not asleep, but you know, after he's been awoken. Um, it, it did flow really nice. It wasn't, DC has got a lot of stick from me and Chris from rushing stories and chucking them again and be like, here's a big ball of mess, chuck it out there. This was more thought out and more well done and a lot more ironed out. Um, maybe one or two things, like I said, second view might change my opinion on stuff. Um, was was it, it was a great story and it flowed lovely and it wasn't rushed. There was a lot of characters we, we had to try and digest during, I can't remember how long the film was. It was a nice, relatively lengthy film. Um, there was a few people we did have to try and digest. Okay, you're you, you're you, she's she, her and he's him. Okay, we got you. But it, it did all flow relatively nicely. So yeah, um, everything about it, it, it felt big, massive, blockbustery, like most rock films do, or Dwayne the Rock Johnson films. Uh, it definitely felt like a comic book film. Where it fits in the whole grand scheme thing of the DCEU, it's hard to say anyway because of how much of a mess it can be over in the DCEU. The Rock did put out something on Instagram or Twitter saying like, Black Adam can, everything in the DC universe, which isn't necessarily the DCEU, like, you know, Jack and Phoenix is Joker and that can all eventually coexist. They can flow between each other because they are in the same universe. Um, I don't know if that means all of a sudden we get Joker 2, here's Black Adam. That's not going to happen, but he says the, the potential for any of it crossover can happen. Um, but it's always best to judge these sort of films until we get a grand plan really going with the DCEU um, to just judge them as singular films. And as a singular film, um, absolutely awesome. Trying to get through this review without completely destroying your ears with this horrible voice. Yes, uh, have we ticked the boxes? I always feel like sometimes I rush this. Well, I, I just said I'm going to rush it. I make a mess of the spoiler free reviews. Um, funny what at times it needs to be a nice thought out, well woven story, good character development, some great um, characters plucked into the DC uh, universe now, the DCEU, like Amp Smasher, you know, Hawkman. I know we've we've had tastes of Hawkman and whatnot anyway in some of the um, shows and stuff, um, but great to have him in there. Um, cool villain, nice little twisty twist of kinds. Um, more than happy now, after, now that we've seen it, to have this version of Black Adam and Dwayne The Rock Johnson to be Black Adam. Um, great action, great fights, that's the same fucking thing. Uh, visually a appealing and, and lovely. Solid, solid 8 out of 10 for me. So I'm usually Mr. Optimist, like, yeah, awesome. But like I said, there was a couple of moments where it, it just kept being like, remember Dan, remember what we're here. He's still bad, but he's good. He's bad. The opinions may change. But there you have it, visuals. Hopefully you've sat through this awful review. I'm sorry, Newcastle United always destroys me. As much as we are doing okay at the minute, I will still always worry and be nervous and nail bite and scream and ah, when we do score, I'll lose it. But that was my spoiler free review for Black Adam. If you did enjoy, please, Wabooski, Booski. Let me know in the comments below anything you want to let me know about the film, if you've seen it already, and come back. Either, it's, we'll come back anyway. It's either going to be this week or the week after. We get a spoiler heavy review up in the podcast alongside the entertainment news. But visuals, thank you so much for watching. Black Adam gets a solid 8 out of 10. And remember, always keep being you and keep on uh, keeping on.